Hi, I'm Natalie, owner of The Sewing Studio, and today we are gonna work on our Clever Charm Pillow, and um, I'm gonna show you how we created this piece with some of our Halloween fabric, and we are gonna walk through our project today so using some of our new fall fabrics. So let's take a look at what we'll need to get this project together. All right, so here are the pieces that we'll need to get this project together. Um, starting off, we have a zipper, and that zipper is um, one of the wider by any zippers, and I've cut it to about 20 inches, and then um, sewed across each end. Um, we have a strip here that's gonna be the flap that covers up our zipper. And then in this particular pattern, because we're creating a flanged pillow, we're gonna use this fabric to add to the ends of our zipper to make it longer without it getting in, without the zipper getting into our flange. And then this will be our little flange piece on the front of our pillow. I have, and those are two inches wide by the width of the fabric, and I have three of them. Um, we have our back fabric, and I have two thirds of a yard for that. And then we have print to be used for our pillow. You can certainly use a charm pack, which is a stack of five inch squares, or you can cut your own. I've fussy cut some of our prints here for today so that we can use those. And then the lighter fabric that creates kind of the border around the pillow, we actually need six squares that are five and a half. So our charm packs come in five inch squares, but for that border piece, we do need them to be five and a half, and we need six of those. So let's go take a look at laying out the top of our pillow and taking a look at how I fussy cut some of these images. So as we look at the front of our pillow, we're piecing our squares together and I wanted to show you two different ways that you can put your um, five inch squares together. And for the Halloween pillow, we had alternating prints. So in the center, we have one print and then of the black, there's two different black prints. And then around those, you can see we have the same flower orange print. And then out here on the corners, we've used two different prints on each of the corners. So you can do a lot of different um, types of combinations on your fabric and use a lot of different types of fabrics. But on our fall pillow, I wanted to show you a little bit simpler version. We're going to use four different prints. So we have the center print and then we have three additional prints and there's four of each one of those five inch squares. And then again, we have that five and a half inch square that we're gonna use as that border fabric around the outside. And there's six of these that we'll need. And for every one of those, you're gonna take your five and a half inch square and then divide that diagonally so that we have triangles to use. That way, with our six squares, we'll end up with 12 triangles to use. So that's one of the things we have to get done is get all of these prepped. And then the other thing I wanted to show you is that on the bicycle and for the pumpkins, I actually fussy cut those out of the fabric so that when they're on the pillow, they sit more like the diamond shape and they fit right instead of being on the angle for the pillow. So for that, I took one of our prints, and I'll use a bicycle print to show you these other ones out of the way. You can do it one of two ways. So we actually have some rulers that are just square, five and a half inch rulers. And again, we need five inch squares, but um, it's really hard to find a five inch ruler. So I have a five and a half inch square and I can at least use it to pare down the image and then take a quarter inch off of all the sides. So that's the easier way because you can lay it on top of your image and see exactly where your image is gonna be. The other thing that you can do is take and then just cut at a 45 degree angle on your fabric one direction and that gives you a line to start with and then you're just going five inches across the image that you want and then cutting that across that piece. So here with our ruler, 
on the bottom of my fabric, I can take and lay my 45 degree mark on that. And if I wanna save this bicycle right here, then I'm just gonna kinda move it down. And if you're a beginner, just make sure that you leave yourself more than five inches here to work with, cause you can always kinda trim from both sides till you get it the size that you want. So we'll cut one side. finish cutting this piece off so I can show you so that that piece now can be used to measure off five inches from the side here and if you can't see your marks you can just take and fold up the edge of your fabric and we're going to go over to the five inch mark and cut that Okay, so now I have a piece that's five inches wide this direction, and now I need to do five inches wide the other way so that we have a square. And when we turn it on its side, you can see that my bicycle is sitting straight now instead of being at an angle. So I'll turn it. I'm laying my ruler square against the side of the fabric. and then cutting one side off. I can use my mat to then cut the other side off. That way we have a five inch square that sat on the diagonal and then when this piece of fabric's on my pillow, the bicycle will sit straight in the design instead of being on one side. So that's how we can fussy cut some of our fabric if we need to find a specific pattern that we want or an image that we really want to hold on to. That's one way that we can get that. So let's take a look at the layout of the front. Okay, so for the front, I think it's easiest to start in the center. And then what I did was I took some of the orange fabric and I placed it on all four sides of that center piece. And then on the outside of that, I took our pumpkin fabric and I just placed it in. And since the pumpkin fabric was also fussy cut, I'm making sure that as I'm looking at it, my pumpkins are sitting the way that I want them to be. And not upside down. So that's how we get those fabrics in there. And then we have our leaf fabric that went around those pieces and they go on the outsides of the orange. And that's the big squares that we use in our pillow. And then we're gonna take our triangular pieces and add those around the outside. So with this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew the rows that are created by putting these fabrics together. And then after I have this piece completely together, then we'll come in on each corner and add that last set of four triangles that will create the sides of our pillow. So let me get these rows together and show you how to put that piece and then we'll add the corners. So one of my tricks for um, making sure that I'm pressing my pieces the right way, um, remember that if we nest our fabrics and I'll make sure and show you that piece in a second so that you know what nesting is, but if we nest our fabrics, we get the perfect corners at each place where all the fabrics meet. And to make sure that I have all the fabrics pressed the right direction, I always put a pin in each row showing that I wanna press in that direction. So if I press all of these towards this top pin, and then on the next row, I press everything down towards this pin, the seams are going in opposite directions and it's easier to nest. So I just put pins in each of the last one and that reminds me which way to press. So I'm gonna go sew these together and I'm just gonna sew the rows and then we'll look at putting our rows together. So here we are at the Baby Lock Altair and I was gonna show you quickly how we can use our general purpose foot to actually sew a quarter inch and how I set um, the machine to do that for me. So on our screen, you can see here that I am at center position and on the Altair and many of the other Baby Lock sewing machines, we actually have a quilting section 
And under that quilting section, I like to use stitch number two. So what that does for us is moves the needle over so that the outside edge of our foot is a quarter inch from where the needle's gonna hit. And that way I can use my general purpose J foot as my quarter inch foot instead of having to get a different one. So let me start sewing some of our pieces together. I usually start with our center strip and start adding fabric to it. And so what we're gonna do is flip these so that right sides are together. And then what we need to do is for each intersection, we wanna make sure that um, right here where they meet, the um, fabrics are going in opposite directions on the back side and the seams. And you wanna kinda of mush them between your fingers so that you get them nice and tight. And you're gonna do that for every intersection. And then that way, when we open it up, they'll be nicely nested together. So I'm gonna do that and get the rest of our rows together. And then um, we'll take a look at putting our corners on. All right, now that we have our front piece mostly together, we need to add the final little corners to create the square that will create be the front of our pillow. And so what I've done is actually folded each of these triangles in half and um, put a crease here in the center. And I've done the same thing on the middle of my square here. And we're just gonna match the two centers and then run a pin through them and then we will finish sewing across that line. It's gonna be longer than we need, um, but that gives us a chance to square everything up and make sure that we have a nice front before we moved on to the next step. Now that we've added our corner pieces, we're going to go ahead and take our ruler and square up those corners and get the extra fabric off. Okay, and so we'll do that to all four corners. Once we get that completed, what we'll do is actually take, and I have a piece of muslin and batting and I like to actually quilt the front of my pillows so we're just going to sandwich this together and then we're going to take it over to the machine and do a little quilting. Now this part is not necessary so if you don't want to do the quilting then you'll just skip this step and you'll go to adding your back fabric. Um, but for ours, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and I'm just going to lay the side of my foot on each of these lines and I'm going to quilt on either side of it. So I'll go down all of them this direction and then I'll come back and do the other direction as well. I really like the way that looks and it's pretty simple for a beginner to be able to complete. And there we have the front of our pillow completely put together and quilted really nicely. So now we're ready to add our flange and add that back to get our project complete. All right, for adding the flange, all we're gonna do is add our border pieces to the sides of our pillow. And um, I use three because one strip will fit the top and the bottom if we cut it in half. And then on the sides, it's gonna be a little bit too long, so you're just gonna to have to use one strip on either side of it. So I will get that finished up, and then we'll take a look at completing our back. All right, now that we have the outside flange added to the front of our pillow, we are ready to add the back and get this project finished. So let's take a look at what we need um, for the back of our pillow. 
Okay, for the back of our pillow, we had the two-thirds yard that we needed um, for the main print, and we've taken that and made two pieces that are 12 inches tall and 24 inches across. And you just need two of those to be the bottom part of the back of the pillow, and then another piece that'll create the top of that. And then the piece that creates the cover of our zipper is um, a piece that I've made and it's four inches tall, and then it's just wider than the pillow. So you could have it be 24 inches and fit exactly, or it can be longer, and then we'll trim it up afterwards. And then for this pillow, we don't want our zipper to be all the way out on the sides because that would be in the flange that we're creating and it makes it a little stiff. So for this one, um, I'm using a zipper that's about 19 inches long. If it was 20 inches long, that's fine. Or 18 is also fine, um, just somewhere in that range. And then we have a couple of pieces of fabric that we're gonna sew on to the end of our zippers. These pieces are three inches by six inches. And you can see that I've just taken one of the sides and actually pressed it in about half an inch to an inch. Um, that way you have this finished edge that will go over your zipper. And that's one way to lengthen your zipper if you ever have um, a piece that you need it to be longer with, but the zipper doesn't fit. You can always just add fabric to the ends. So we're gonna add the fabric to the ends first, and then we'll come back and add the zipper to the bottom part of our pillow. And then um, we'll add the top with the piece that's gonna end up covering up our zipper. So first we'll go over and add the strips to our zipper. Okay, so in the side that has the piece where we folded it over, you're gonna slide the zipper into that opening and you want the zipper to go inside of the fabric by at least half an inch. It doesn't have to be exact, but that's what we're kind of shooting for. And then I'm nestling it against the bottom fold of that fabric. And then we're just gonna top stitch. And when we top stitch, we're just gonna sew about an eighth of an inch in from the outside of this fabric. Um, these are nylon zippers, and so we can just sew right over the teeth. Be careful of using metal zippers on a project like this, because you're not able to sew over the teeth. So now we have the fabric sewn onto the end of our zippers and you can see that it's longer than the back and that's okay. We won't worry about trimming it even until we get the whole piece together. Um, also I wanted to state that um, if your fabric doesn't end up being even with your zipper, then you can just go in and trim this so that the fabric's the same width as your zipper all the way down. That makes it sew into the seams a lot easier. So now we're just going to take our zipper over to the sew machine and we're going to place the zipper face down on the bottom part of our pillow back and then we're just going to sew along that line and I'll show you how I um, sew my zippers in so that I keep everything nice and neat and my seams straight. Okay so on our baby lock altair um, when I'm sewing in a zipper instead of using a zipper foot what I like to use is our general purpose foot and then so that the zipper doesn't get in the way of the foot, we move our stitch over to stitch one, which um, moves our needle all the way over to the left. All right, the other thing that you need to make sure and do on your back as you're placing your zipper, I've pinned mine in place, making sure that I match the center of the back fabric and the center of the zipper. And that way that zipper stays in the middle and the fabric's about the same on either side. And then now we're just gonna put that underneath our needle. And on our J foot, since we have the needle all the way over in the left position, I'm lining up the side of my zipper on the inside of the metal on the right leg of that foot. And that gives us about a quarter inch, but it keeps the zipper teeth on the outside of the J foot on this side. So we're just gonna sew down that straight seam. If I continue to go here, my zipper pull is gonna be in my way. So we need to move the zipper pull back um, before we continue sewing. So I have my needle down in my zipper and I'm gonna lift my presser foot up, kind of turn it at an angle and you can pull your zipper pull back around behind your foot. And then you're just realigning everything and finishing the seam. 
So there we have the zipper attached to the bottom. We have one more step before we add the other side. We need to go in and top stitch our fabric down. If you've ever had a zipper catch your fabric in and make it hard to pull it open, um, it's because they didn't take and top stitch your fabric back. So to do that, what I do is we're gonna go back to center position on our machine. And then again, in the same fashion, we're gonna run the seam where the two fabrics meet on the inside of the right metal piece. And that will keep us straight as we go down and it'll top stitch our fabric down to our zipper and keep it out of the way as we open and close the zipper. I'm making sure to open the seam as I go to kind of pull the fabric back, but I'm not pulling it so much that I distort the zipper. So we're just trying to make sure that it's laying nice and flat. Okay, so there we have our zipper attached to the bottom part of our fabric. Now we need to go stack the um, zipper cover and the top part of our zipper together. And then we're gonna do the same thing that we did with this side. We'll move our needle to the left and sew down and then we'll put it back in center and top stitch those pieces down. Okay, so now we're ready to add the other two fabrics to our zipper so that we can get our back completed. Um, we have the fabric that's gonna be our zipper cover and um, we're laying it so that the folded edge is facing down over the zipper and that the raw edges are aligned with the side of the zipper. So we have that piece that's covering it up and then we're gonna take the um, pillow back top piece and we're gonna lay it right sides together with the bottom. What's really important here is that we make sure and line up the sides of the top and the bottom. Um, if you're not careful, then you'll get this piece kind of over here on this side, and you'll notice that it's not gonna be wide enough now because we're gonna have to trim off all of this extra piece that's not in alignment. So you wanna make sure that not only are you staying in line with the zipper across the top, but that your side pieces are matching as well so that um, we don't lose that distance as we sew. So I'm just gonna pin all this together and then we'll take it over to the sewing machine and attach the top part to the zipper just like we did before. So a quick tip when you're sewing with a zipper and you're trying to pin, I'm taking my pins and I'm actually going under the teeth on one side and then up through the other side of where the zipper teeth are. Um, that allows me to pin the fabric to it without stabbing through the zipper teeth. Okay, just as a reminder here, we have our, our needle moved to the left position and then I'm lining up my fabric against the inside of that leg on the right piece of that foot. So I'm up against the zipper pull again on our zipper and so we have to move it back out of the way again. So I'm angling it and then pulling the zipper underneath our presser foot. If you can't get the zipper pull underneath the presser foot, just make sure and back stitch here to secure your stitches. Pull it out, move the zipper, and then back stitch it. Start with the back stitch again and then come towards the end of your pillow. That way you lock your stitches in. This time when we top stitch, again, we're gonna move our needle back to center position. We're gonna make sure that the zipper cover is covering up the zipper. And then we're gonna top stitch on the back fabric so that it holds it all down across our zipper. So this time we're lining up with the left inside piece of our foot so that we can keep a straight line. So there we have the back of our pillow complete, and now we're ready to sew our front and our back together. Make sure that you leave your zipper kind of pulled to the middle. It'll make sure that we don't sew that zipper pull when we're going around the outside, and it gives us a place to flip this pillow when we're done. So we're just gonna take our pillow front, and what's important here is that 
We have the flap facing down because the fabric is looking at us. And on the front, we wanna make sure that happens too. So we're just gonna flip this over so that they're both facing the same direction. That way when we flip it, our trucks are going the right way and this flap is facing down like it should when it's right side up. And then here, what I'm doing is I'm taking kind of the center of my front and then I'm laying that on our zipper teeth so that they're in alignment. So even if your back is not completely straight, if you're in alignment with that zipper, then when we finish, it will be straight. Okay. So we're gonna pin this all together and we're just gonna sew around the outside completely to enclose our pillow. Make sure to pin really good so that all the layers stay together in one place as you're sewing. So now we're just gonna sew a quarter inch all the way around the outside of our pillow. So just as a reminder, if we wanna use our general purpose foot and get a quarter inch, then we're gonna go over to our quilting screen or select quilting on our machines and then do the quarter inch, which is the second stitch on the Altair, but several of the other baby lock machines have that same feature. When we get to a corner, we're just gonna pivot and go down the next side. Now that our back is attached to our front, we need to go in and trim all of this even. We made those pieces a little bit larger than our front so that we had room to square up. And so I'll trim the back even with the front. And then I'll also come in here and dog ear my corners. And that means that we're just gonna um, cut at an angle on the corner and that just makes this corner pop out a whole lot nicer and look better when we're finished. After we get our um, project trimmed so that both the front and the back of our pillow are even, then comes the fun part because we actually get to flip our pillow through the opening of the zipper. So make sure that you leave that open um, and see what our final project's gonna look like. And then as you're flipping, just make sure that you, po you poke out your corners really well. You can use um, a tool called a purple thing or um, the end of a pair of scissors and you're just making sure that you work out those corners pretty well. All right, so then the last step here, I love how our pillow is turning out. The last step is to create that kind of fake flange that we have around the outside. And so we're gonna take it over to the ironing board and make sure that our pillow is pressed and that the seam is pressed out as best we can. And then what we'll do is we'll top stitch or stitch in the ditch as they like to call it between where the fabrics for the pillow and the flange meet. And that creates that little flange and keeps our pillow form from going up underneath it. So I'll take it over to the ironing board, press those, and then I'll show you how we top stitch there in between those two fabrics. Okay, now that we have our um, flange pressed really nicely, making sure to press open that seam and get that to look really nice, what we need to do now is to create that um, flange by sewing along the seam between the where the pillow front is and where this flange begins. And by doing that, we sew all the way through it, so it is kind of a top stitch. Um, and we're gonna basically be doing the stitch in the ditch. Um, that creates a pocket in here for our pillow, but it doesn't let the pillow go out in this distance so that it stays loose. So we had our machine set for a quarter inch stitch. So to do our stitch in the ditch, we need to make sure that our needle's back in center position. Having our needle in center position allows us to keep the seam between the flange and the pillow 
um, straight. And so our whole goal is just to stitch as close as we can um, to that fabric and keep it as straight as we can so we don't see the stitches bat bounce back and forth between the two sides. And that's what we um, call stitching in the ditch. Probably best to stitch a little slower to make sure that you're staying straight and in that seam as close as you can. One thing to note as well, if you find that your top fabric is puckering or um, creating these little gaps in it, you might also want to add a walking foot on the Baby Lock Altair. The feed dogs pull our fabric well enough that I don't need a walking foot, but on a smaller machine, you might consider getting a walking foot to help pull these evenly as you sew through them. Just like before, I'm kind of pulling the seam open to make sure that I'm nesting those thread stitches down in by the seam. When you get around to where you started, again, make sure that you backstitch to secure your stitches. And there we have our project complete. I like how the flange adds just a little bit more detail to our project. And you can see after adding a 20 inch pillow insert into our pillow, um, you get the nice look of this flange sticking out all the way around the outsides. So I really hope that you enjoyed getting to do this project with us. And as always, let it, thanks for letting us turn your inspiration into your creation. If you liked what you saw today, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to receive those notifications, make sure you click on the bell icon. Thanks for letting us turn your inspiration into your creation.